Hey guys, AJ here, back with another one. So today, we're going to look at one of my favorite interviews from Entrepreneurs and Cars. And if you haven't checked out his channel, he talks about, you know, just gen general uh, MGTOW, Red Pill stuff. Uh, he also talks about finances, and he gives some really good advice to men. Check out his channel. He's really, really good. We had an interview with John Fitch, and John Fitch talks about how he got red pilled and his divorce. And so we're going to go over a little a bit of it, but it's a really good interview, and you'll check it out. And just for some context, uh, so I'm a huge MMA fan, and John Fitch, Josh Koscheck, and Mike Swick, they were like AKA before DC and in Cain Velasquez. So like, they were all what. Well, top five welterweights and they were doing really, really good but they would never fight each other so dana white hated hated him and john fitz's style it wasn't too exciting but he would always win because he would take you down and grind you out so he actually got to fight for the title once and then gsp beat him up but it is what it is but he's a really smart guy and he talks about his divorce so let's just jump into it how much i weighed like what my workout was that day everything eh? And yeah, it was, it's like a bit obsessive, but um, yeah. So I think going through the uh, the divorce thing got me looking for knowledge. So I'm following different people, looking for different uh, outlooks, more positive outlooks. People who are looking to grow and and and, and learn and make more money. And then I stumble across, I think, uh, the game. So um, Neil Strauss. Neil Strauss, and I yeah, was like, it's a good book. And I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a technician, right? As far as a fighter. Okay. I wasn't mm. the fastest, strongest guy out there, but. And he is right because John Fitch wasn't some super athlete like, you know, GSP, John Jones, et cetera, but he could implement his game plan really, really well and win a lot. I could outthink you and I could use technique to lure you into my traps. So the idea of this pickup and the stuff they were doing, it was all just technique to me. Mm -hmm. It made sense. Technique makes sense. So look down that path even more, uh, more red pill stuff, rational mail and uh, more and more stuff online. Jordan Peterson books. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I think I got to a place where I was like, this is a problem that not enough people are aware of what reality is and how much of this kind of blue pill mindset steal mm -hmm. from you exactly guys exactly to, to i know that all you guys who like and subscribe you guys all agree it's like you get out of the matrix and then you see your male friends your male family members going through all the same ridiculousness and you you go to the rooftops and you want to scream and yell to wake them all up and they're not waking up and they don't understand how much time and effort they're wasting on this beta male blue pill bs you know i think all of us we just know there's something wrong you know like you're looking around you can you can feel it and then you have that moment that aha moment you know and then you're trying to spread the message to help everyone and they're just looking at you like you're crazy you know let's jump back into it and a lot of it is really it's a theft of power, I think, from a lot of men. Yep. Are, are most I would say a theft of power and a redistribution of wealth, too. From men to women. Excuse me, from men to women through the proxy of the government. Yep. Fighters pretty plugged into the blue pill? Like, are they mostly, like, no. blue-pilled alphas? I think a lot, yeah, that's a good way to put it. A lot of blue-pilled alphas. Because you don't even see a lot of them who are, like, Trump supporters or... Uh, uh you know, Bolsonaro supporters in Brazil or, you know, but they'll still, they'll still stand for, for feminist stuff. Got it. Was it the, was it the actual, like, like the wife giving you the, I love you, but I don't love you talk that, that started red pill year, or was it like going through divorce machine after it? Like what, what was divorce like for you in California? Cause I mean, that's a pretty hostile state, you know, man, he was married in California Guys, if you're married in California and you're getting divorced there, you're doomed. Doomed. Towards fathers, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, she, I mean, she was, I, she used lube. Okay. We'll just say that. She used lube in the div divorce rate. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, at least that was kind of her, right? Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll give her that. She used it. It could have been worse. At least we can laugh you about know, it now. I see the kids, so I'm not getting hit up for or, uh, um, child support. Um, the uh, No alimony. Because at the time, like, I was thinking about retiring. So, like, mm-hmm. it was she was just started working. So it was possible. She, she could have had to pay me alimony. So she was okay with signing off on saying no alimony. Mm-hmm. So that, that went in my favor. Um, stay- hey man, I'm petty. I had to take him out of the At home mom or she was a stay at home body. Stay at home wife, but not a mom she was there. She was at home, but okay. she wasn't like doing them. She like, man, can you imagine you're going out, you're training, Six hours a day because MMA guys train morning, afternoon, and evening. And then you go and you spar and you get beat up. And then you go fight and get punched in the face. And MMA fighters don't get paid that much, you know. And then you come home and your wife is just sitting on the couch like Peggy Bundy eating bonbons and not taking care of your kids. Man. Like, was she wasn't doing the mom stuff? Yeah, like I was double duty in a lot of things. Do you guys have a nanny too or? No. Really? So like you were, you were playing parent plus, you know, the yep. income order. I, I was training for a world title and I would have to stop in the middle of sparring around and change a diaper. Really? And then- Think about how crazy that is. You're training to fight the UFC champion. You got to change your kids diapers in the middle of training, man. Jump back in and finish the round. And she didn't do that for you. She wasn't like, John, you go chase excellence. I got this. Nope. She was at home checking out Instagram or whatever. And then I would Shit. come home from that and I would need to, I'd have to make my own lunch. So I'd have to uh, rest. And then she would take off and leave and run errands or get her hair done or whatever. Did, 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 did um, you not like taking a title have any impact you think on, you know, the marriage and her wanting to bounce? Um, me getting dropped from the UFC. Yes. Uh, okay, so it was around this. So I want to give you guys some context here. So John Fitch was one of the first guys that was complaining about fighter pay and also the fact that the UFC really is not a true meritocracy in that it's not about winning all the time. It's how you win, right? So John Fitch was undefeated for a long time, but even I can say that his style wasn't the most exciting, but he was the clear number one guy to fight, but because he didn't talk trash, and because all of his wins were kind of the same grinding style, you know, the UFC had a problem, so he was one of the first real ones I, I remember having problems with Dana White, and then he wanted his likeness in the video game, he wanted to get paid for it, and, and they dropped him, and did all, it was just a whole bunch of madness there, so the moment that he started losing, they drop kicked him real fast. At the same time as that? I think her attitude changed a lot. Well, I mean, like, me, she was not a favor, not a fan of me pushing back against the UFC. She wanted me to shut up and be a good boy and just suck Dana's dick. Just do what he wants. So imagine that you're a fighter. Your whole life is five fighting. Your being, your masculine frame is fighting. Fighting for your money, fighting for your family, fighting for respect, and your and the woman that is supposed to be your 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 backup in life. That's supposed to be your helpmeet. That's supposed to be your your partner in crime is telling you not to fight, not to fight for your for your respect, to not not to fight for more money. Just roll over. That's ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. that. Was, she's like she took their side. Yeah, that's that's not good. Yeah, she took she took their side in the situation, and that was kind of like some of the first like, oh, really? That's your attitude. Like, it was more important for her to like get the money and be in the scene than it was for like her family to like not be robbed. Yes. And by be in the scene, he means go to like you know the UFC events and go to like you know the World MMA awards and all of that, all those perks that you get being a quote unquote UFC fighter. So we've got playing to win and we've got playing not to lose and women yeah. typically play not to lose, right? Absolutely. So that was, that was the, well, that's what she wanted you to do. Don't rock the boat, John. Yes. You know, so then the, yeah. So a lot of that was, you know, then money changed. My job status changed. Uh, my social circle changed. 
um, a lot because I'm not I'm not going to hang out with people in this you know that are going to that thing and do those things. Um, yeah, so that was that was a big part of it, and you know. Part of me too, like I have to go through my journals and see like when the when that happened. But there was a point where I was like, "What am I doing? Like, why am I putting so much effort into this?" So I like I stopped doing shit for her and I focused on me and the kids. Mm-hmm. I think all of us have that moment because you know, guys, I I don't care if you want to admit it or not. All of us have simped for some chick at one point, and then you just have that aha moment. You know, even I I have guys. Hey. It is what it is, but luckily I, I had that kind of aha moment that John Fitch, Fitch is talking about. New place, and uh, I was going to sell my truck. I love my truck. Mm. I wasn't going to get much money for it, and I came home one day, <clears throat> and I, was, I found somebody to buy it, and it was well under what I was hoping to give for it. And I came back, and, and, and I walked in the house, and – she like dropped like five hundred bucks on nails and hair and shit that day. Five hundred bucks, guys. And I was like, "What the hell am I? Why am I giving up my truck? Like, why am I giving up something I love?" She's not giving anything up, and like we're struggling for this money. So like, whatever. I was like, "Nope." And I start putting premium gas in the truck. Uh huh. <laughs> But well, it sounds like you're better off today than what you were when you were married, man. I, yeah, I am, but yeah, it still stings. Like, especially, like I was just in a Bitcoin early, and me being bullied and harassed by her because it's not a real thing, and you're wasting time, and you should have a real job, and blah 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 blah. blah. Like, I stopped trading and stopped buying Bitcoin. I was hundreds of dollars at that time. Yeah, and for those who don't know. I first heard about Bitcoin back in like 2004, 2005, when it was dirt cheap. And I'm not a big crypto guy, especially now. It's November 2022 and and crypto's in the trash. But if I would have got into crypto in 2004, 2005, 2006 or whatever, I can't. I think it was my senior year of college when I first heard of it. So that was like 2006-ish. I had made a lot of cash in between then and say 2020, you know what I'm saying? So, and he's saying that he could have got in early too. And that his wife was basically, I don't want you to buy it into it. Mm -hmm. If I, if I would have focused on me and money and muscles, I would have, I would have been a billionaire right now. He said me, money and muscles. (laughs) Yeah. All right, you guys, that's a, that's a short clip. I mean, you can find the whole interview just with John Fitch and then Entrepreneurs and Cars. But guys, I mean, John Fitch is was for a long time one of the top five best welterweights in the world, you know? And he had the respect of all the fighters, and even though the fans didn't like his style, they respected him, but he couldn't get the respect of his own woman in the house. Guys, if you ever find yourself in that situation... What do I always say? Throw the smoke bomb and disappear into the mist. All right, you guys. You know, that's all I have. You guys are the best. This is AJ. I'm out. Stay safe.